Excellent. I heard I heard someone say woo. Oh, okay, it's Jessica. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're just about to get started. Thank you so much, Internet audience, for tuning in. Everybody is still uh, coming into the doors here in the house. We've said hello to them. Pastor and the team, you may be able to uh, watch us right now. We say hello to you. We're looking forward to hearing from you in just a moment. Uh, Pastor and the team are still in Ghana. They will be back on Friday night, so we are looking forward to seeing them on our Sunday services. Hope that you're ready for that. And we want you to be aware that you can view uh, the team's sessions and conferences in Ghana on our Facebook page. So if you would like to tap into that on, on all platforms, Cicero said. So you can go to YouTube, Facebook, etc., our website uh, to find those things, okay? Uh, and that's something that you really want to see, be a part of, because that's what you're giving towards, that's what you're praying into, and it's amazing what the Lord is doing around the world uh, with CCCF and with his body as a whole. Amen. Well, everybody, it is now time for worship, so we'll pray in, and then we'll jump straight into worship with Sister Stephanie. Father, we thank you very much for this time that we can gather together in your name. We thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done for each one here. I pray that we would know your love, your heart, your intent for each one here like never before, Jesus. As a result of this service, as a result of our time with you, Jesus, we pray that you will bless this service and bless each one who are here and who are a part of what you're doing. Lord Jesus, we thank you. Your kingdom come and your will be done. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Sister Stephanie. Hallelujah. Let's stand and worship him this morning. He's worthy of our praise. Aren't you glad we serve a faithful God? Yes. chains will never break but they don't know you like we do there is power in your name we've heard that there is no way through we've heard the tide will never change they haven't seen what you can do there is power in your name so much power in your name sing it with me move move the immovable break the unbreakable god we
And in that same breath, the stars fell in line with one voice, creation cries, you do all things well. You do all things well. Be praised. Be praised forever and always. Oh, we praise your name. Oh, we lift you on high. Oh, oh. Praise your name, God. Oh, yeah. When I think of all you've done and all the battles you brought me over, hallelujah. All the storms I saw you come in my defense, my only song is Hallelujah. How he never let me fall, now unto him who is able. Hallelujah. Let that never be a day that I don't rise to bring you praise. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. When I think of all you've done and all the battles you brought me over. Hallelujah. Oh, we sing hallelujah. In all the storms I saw you come in my defense, my only song is hallelujah. Oh, my song sings hallelujah. How he never let me fall, now unto him who is able. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Be a day that I don't rise to bring you praise. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Be praised, 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 our God. you're worthy and that's how long I bring you praise that's how long you're worthy and that's how long I bring you praise that's how long you're worthy oh that's how long I bring you praise that's how long you're worthy Lord that's how long you're worthy that's how long I bring you praise that's how long you worthy. That's how long you worthy. That's how long I'll bring you praise. That's how long you worthy. That's how long I'll bring you praise. That's how long you worthy. That's how long I'll bring you praise. That's how long you worthy. 
worthy. If that's how long I'll bring you praise. That's how long you're worthy, Lord. If that's how long I'll bring you praise. If that's how long you're worthy. If that's how long I'll bring you praise. Ever be 
you will be praised with angels and saints we sing worthy are you Lord and I worship you almighty God sing it with me there is none like you I worship you I worship you, O oh, Prince of Peace. This is what I long to do, and I give you praise, for you are my righteous. I worship you, Almighty God. There is none like you. Let's just sing that one more time. I worship you. I worship you, Almighty God. There's none like you. There is none like you. Oh, I worship you. I worship you. Oh, Prince of Peace. That is what I long to do. And I give. Almighty God, there is none like you. It's none like you, Lord. There is none like you. It's none like you, Jesus. There is none like. just stay where we are for a few moments. Thank you, Jesus. There is no one like you, Lord. And you shall be praised all the days of our life on into eternity because of your goodness and what you have done, your eternal work. Your eternal work giving us life. Before you, we existed before we received your son, we existed, but now we're living. We thank you, God, for giving us eternal life right now, Jesus. Thank you that we can experience your eternal life right now. Lord Jesus, we lift up these prayer requests to you. I'm seeing cancer on multiple prayer cards here, Lord Jesus. And I'm asking you, Lord, that you would move in our midst like never before, Jesus move in our midst like never before. May we see your hand at this point in time like we've never seen it before in our life, Jesus. Some in this room have been here for 80 years. I pray that we would all see your hand move right now like never before, Jesus. Because of your goodness, because of your kindness, Lord God, we don't deserve to see your hand move, but we pray, Lord Jesus, that your hand would move, move mightily on each one's behalf today. Mightily. Lord God, we pray for Angie. We ask God that you would remove these lesions. Lord God, cause her kidneys to be perfectly well and operational in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, heal her, heal our sister. We also ask Lord God, 
for Derry, who is dealing with stage five chronic kidney disease. We ask, Lord, that you would heal Derry. Heal Derry in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that we don't need many words. We're calling out to our God who knows the situation. We thank you, Jesus. Heal Derry. Lord, we pray for Vanessa, who has stage four cancer. That's the diagnosis, Lord God, but we're going to you, the great physician, Jesus. You do all things well. That's the song that we sang. You do all things well. All things well. Heal Vanessa in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, these requests from Brother John, we ask that you would bring healing. Remove cancer from these individuals. Remove cancer in the name of Jesus Christ. doesn't matter what stage it is. It's under your authority. We pray for Pastor Bert. We ask for complete and total healing for him, Lord. Restore him. Remove exhaustion and make him well, Lord Jesus. Make him well. Lord, we pray for Lori. We ask that you would heal Lori and bring her to full health, Lord God. And I pray as well for joy for Lori. Fill her with your joy. You are our joy, so may her eyes be fixed on you regardless of the circumstances and situations of life. And I pray, Lord, that you will pull her up out of this pit, Lord Jesus, that she's in. Sometimes we dig ourselves into pits, but you're the one who delivers us from them. We thank you for that, Jesus. We also pray for Patty, who has breast cancer. Lord Jesus, right here, pastors told us a story many times, right here, you healed a young woman of breast cancer. On the spot, we ask the same for Patty, Jesus. We ask the same today. Lord, we're banking on you and what you've done time and time again. We're asking that you would move, Lord Jesus, that you would move on her behalf and on our behalf because of our prayers, because of the saints, because of the movement and unction of your spirit. Lord, we pray for Austin, and I ask that you will heal Austin. Lord, of all these debilitating diseases, heal him, Lord Jesus. Remove cancer. Remove the, the tumor in his head, Jesus. Heal his nervous system. Make Austin completely and totally whole, and may he cling to you, Jesus, not to anyone else, Lord God. May we not look to the world, cling to the world for solutions, but to you and you alone, God. And may we come out from among this world, Lord. May we come out from among them and be totally and completely given to you, Jesus. I pray that for all of us, that we'd come out completely and totally, that we'd not look like children who belong to the devil, Lord Jesus. That's what it looks like when we start meshing with the world. They're children under the influence of the devil. May we look altogether different as we are yours and yours alone. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, God. We thank you for moving in our midst, and we pray that you would continue to do so today. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Thank you all so much for being here. We appreciate seeing you today. It's so good to have you in our midst. Thank you, Sister Stephanie and the team, for praise and worship. We appreciate you all so much. How is everybody doing today? Amen. Amen. Uh, Pastor and the team will be tuning in in just a moment through uh, FaceTime. So as long as there's no technical difficulties, we'll see them in just a moment. They are currently in Ghana ministering the word of God powerfully there. Yes, Miss Agnes. Uh, it has been powerful, and that's something that you can tune into. Let me make a little correction to what I said earlier. You can tune in via Facebook, uh, Twitter, and Instagram. And Instagram, if you would like to see those sessions and see uh, what you're giving and what your prayers are doing around the world, okay? It's big. It's huge. And I think we need to see the context and see what God is doing so that we can really be a part and know just how big this thing is. Jesus is amazing, and he never stops working. So uh, as well, our pastor doesn't stop working, and we don't stop working. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, my name is Tim Mutchler. I'm the pastor of the young adults here at the fellowship, and I am here to greet especially our first-time guests. So if we have any first-time guests in the house, if you wouldn't mind raising your hand, we'd love to acknowledge you and give you a gift. Excellent. It's great to have you all here. So glad. If you all wouldn't mind keeping your hands up, we have a gift for you. Thank you so much. 
and anybody else that we miss, if you wouldn't mind just waving down uh, an usher or something if you haven't received your gift or if you don't in just a few seconds, okay? We also have um, an information card for you. Excellent. So glad that you're here. Yes, we hope that you enjoy it and then you come back for more. Uh, sometimes people are healed uh, in a church and they go out and they start searching for where God wants them. I think if the Lord did something for you somewhere, hey, keep coming back until the Lord says otherwise. The Lord, the Lord himself. <laughs> Amen. Okay, everybody, uh, all of the gifts are, are out. Those information cards are just so we can call you and connect with you. We do not spam. We don't do any of that stuff. Uh, we don't sell your information, nothing like that. We're looking to connect with you and see how things are going, if we can pray with you, and if there might be something that you need, if there might be something that you need, okay? All right, everybody, we can go ahead and stand up in the house and greet one another. Excellent, excellent. We have some birthday wishes. We'll get to those in just a moment. But if we could find our seats, Pastor and the team are ready via FaceTime to say hello. Don't want to keep them waiting. All right. Let's see if we can get this thing going. Hello, team. Nine times already today. This uh, this afternoon, in 15 minutes, and answering questions. Know that we love you. Know that things are going awesome. God is moving in this place. Love you, and we miss you very much. Okay, now all we love you as well, Sister Marva. Everyone, it's we're cutting we're in and out a little bit, but we can hear a three good amount. We love you guys. And the ministry has done so clearly here, like really straight Michael into the lives of the people here, and so it's it's cutting it's cutting in and out. Awesome. 
Okay. It's cutting in and out, but we can see your faces, and it's good to see your faces. Hey, Sister Marta. It's possible for us to be here. These people are so hungry and you've God bless you, Susie. CFI family, greetings in Jesus' name. Pastor Shafkai. It's good to see you, Pastor Shafkai. We're glad you're there with the team. Pastor Shafkai is from Pakistan. He was just here for our TFI conference and then throughout this time he was here, here as well. And uh, God is using his man mightily, mightily. Uh, we have uh, uh, in preaching with great revelation and great authority. People are receiving Jesus like never before, and uh, it's a it's a it's a joy we carry. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And and last but, but importantly, so I want to know we are we are so. Let's see if we get him back in a clear spot in a second. <laughs> we love you all very much. Here's the inside of this particular conference. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Look at that. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you very much, Barry. Appreciate it. Sound booth as well. Thank you all. I know those technical things, they can, uh, they can be interesting to work with. A lot of times while we're out at the conferences, we have a little bit of Wi-Fi, so they had enough to connect with us, and we heard some really good things. I heard Sister Jadita say that things are going powerfully over there. The Lord's moving powerfully. Uh, we heard some words from Sister Marva as well. She loves you. Uh, Sister Susan said that it would be impossible for them to be there without you. And then we heard Pastor Shafkat pretty clearly. So that's great. Again, Pastor Shafkat is there from Pakistan. Uh, that, that is amazing to me. We're seeing nations coming together, not just here in America, but around the world. That's big. Pastor once shared, I think we were in Ghana at this time. He said that much will be accomplished just in our yes. He was talking about the work of the Lord and the evangelization of the entire world. And he said, really, all that needs to happen is the church needs to say yes. And just in our yes, the work will be done. So right now we're seeing people around the world saying yes to Jesus and coming together as one body. Amen? Amen. Thank you all so much. Okay, so we have a few birthdays here and a shout-out for a, an anniversary. Uh, it says here that the Lunas are celebrating 56 years of marriage today. Let's see, where are the Lunas? Oh, excellent, 56 years. Amen. Amen. We're on our way, honey. We're babies, but we're on our way. <laughs> All right. Let's see. We have uh, a happy birthday to Sloan. We love you so much. May you grow into the woman you are destined to be in Christ. Mom and dad wrote this scripture verse for you, Galatians 4, 7. So you are no longer a slave, but God's daughter. Amen. And since you are his daughter, God has made you his heir. Amen. Love you, dad, mom, uh, brothers from Justin and Jackie, mom and dad. It also is from Papa Robert and Rara Dahlia. Welcome to the wonderful twos, they say. See the Kuipers right over here? Hey. Happy birthday to you, Sloan. You have a good family. A good family. 
<laughs> I thought you were saying amen to the uh, good family part, but you were saying amen because you saw Sloan up there and the good family part. <laughs> we also have a happy birthday. It says, King Smith, six today. King, you are a wonderful and joyful blessing that is loved by all. We pray you into the leader that we see in you through the Spirit of God. We thank God for you and your love, and as always, continue to be blessed on purpose and in purpose. Your loving Tia and Papa Oli. Let's see. Where's King? Where's King? Hey, hey, happy birthday. Happy birthday, King. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. Wow. Let's see. Okay. We're good now. Uh, if you wouldn't mind turning your attention to the screens, we have some video announcements for you. Hello, Fellowship family. Let us shout joyfully to the Lord. Let us serve the Lord with gladness and delight in Him. I'm Jennifer, and here are some announcements. Single Focus will host its monthly luncheon today after the second service in the MWC classroom. If you are an unmarried adult over 35, we invite you to be a part of it. Children are welcome. It will be a great time of food, fun, and Christ-centered fellowship. We know that you will leave encouraged. Please see Sister Andrea Johnson for more information. Spring is in the air, and it is time to move our clocks forward one hour. Daylight savings time begins this weekend, so please remember to move your clocks forward one hour on Saturday, March the 11th, before going to bed. To all the mighty men, we invite you to join Pastor Mario Benitez for the men's discipleship class every Monday evening at 7 p.m. through Zoom. And... We invite you to join Brother Alex Callahan for Rock Solid Men every Saturday morning at 8.30 a.m. in the Kingdom Builder Classroom. These powerful classes meet every week and are open to all of you. Take advantage of them this week. To all Proverb 31 ladies, we have classes for you as well. We invite you to attend Surrender Living on Tuesday nights and Becoming Women of Excellence on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Both classes are available through Zoom. Also, join Discipled in His Image on Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. in the LOG room. These classes are led by dynamic and powerful women and are just for you. Invite your daughter or a friend and join us. Please call the church office if you want to learn more about these classes. We invite you to join us at Kingsville Christian Fellowship this week on Thursday at 7 p.m. for midweek worship service and Saturday at 9 a.m. for weekly Bible study class. God is doing great things in Kingsville. We encourage you to pray for KCF and to be a part of what the Lord is doing there. Are you looking for a way to be more involved and served in ministry? Consider joining and serve as a camera operator, photographer, video and graphic editor, or in social media. The television and media ministries are in need of volunteers. Please speak with Sister Rose Lavelle today, or you can contact her through the church office, and you can be a part of this powerful and dynamic ministry. And now we'll return to our wonderful worship service. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Thank you, Jen. Appreciate it. We have a lot going on here at the fellowship and a lot to be plugged into. I know I mention that often, uh, but I just want to say that it is healthy to be plugged in and connected. Uh, it is very healthy. So if we want to be those stalwart fed calves, then we want to be fed, and we want to be fed the word of God by brothers and sisters uh, here that have been appointed to teach those classes and to connect uh, with others, you know, brothers and sisters. Those who are connected are always the healthiest, if you don't mind me saying. Always. We're always the healthiest when we're connected. I'm speaking for myself as well. Amen. Well, it is now time for our tithes and our offerings. So if you need an offering envelope, please raise your hand, and we'll see to it that you get one. We also, um, in just a few moments, we will also raise hands so that we can uh, receive some gifts for our guests we went into our greeting time, and we, hadn't, we had so many guests today that we didn't get all of our gifts out. So we'll make sure that you get a gift if you're a first-time guest. Um, okay. 
All righty. Well, what we'll actually do as you're in, in a little bit, at the end of the service rather, whenever you're heading out, if you're a first-time guest with us, if you wouldn't mind just saying to one of the ushers, hey, I'm a first-time guest, I didn't get my gift, would you mind giving me it? We'd really appreciate that. Can we, can we do that, first-time guests, if you didn't get one? Do you all mind? Is that a good way? Okay, we'll do that. Just remember to mention it to one of the ushers, and we'll see to it that you get one, okay? All right, everybody has an offering envelope. We have three ways to give here at the fellowship. You can see those ways on the screen. And then we also have our get out of debt covenant boxes on either side of the stage. Everything that goes there goes directly against the principle of the debt of the house. And the Lord is getting us out of debt completely and totally so we can minister uh, globally and here locally like never before. Amen. So let's, let's be a part of that. All right. We'll now pray and receive the tithes and the offerings. Father, we thank you very much for an opportunity to give to you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your provision. We thank you that you have everybody in this room covered. And we thank you for the blessing that is promised, Lord Jesus, as we live our lives for you, as we stay connected to you, and as we give back, Lord Jesus. May we not think that everything that comes our way is for us. No, everything that comes our way is from you, and it is for you. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Let's receive the tithes and the offerings. Amen. Thank you, Amy. Appreciate it. Well, it is now time to receive the word, and we will be receiving the word today from Pastor Stan. Pastor asked him to bring the word today. So, yeah, amen, amen. As you know, Pastor has described Pastor Stan as being the executive of explaining things. The executive of explaining things, that's a big title. That's a big title. That's a teacher title right there. And I, I would just like to mention as well that I remember the first time that I heard a message from you, Pastor Stan, uh, and I remember where I was listening to it at our house. I kind of just sat there on the ground and turned on a CD player. Yeah, it was a CD player at that point in time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, my mom came home. She said, hey, have you ever heard of Stan Mack? I said, no, I haven't heard him minister yet. Well, he ministered tonight. You need to listen to it. And it was on Isaiah 54, um, and it was a powerful message. So I remember it to this day. You're going to be blessed by the word today very powerfully. The first service was great. The service will be great. Thank you, Pastor Stan. Good morning. Still morning. 
And by the way, it's secretary of explaining stuff. <laughs> I was promoted, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, you know, and I, I, I like that title. That was, my other title was my favorite, but I had to surrender it. Pastor made me give it up. I used to be the most holy, right reverend, Brother Mac. But I had to surrender it. <clears throat> Couldn't keep it. <laughs> Thank you, Mena. Um, you know, I um, y'all know what month this is, right? March, right? Uh, you know what that means, right? March Madness. Yes, basketball. Yeah, and our. Uh, in our house, March Madness kind of means my wife and I, because we more often than not don't pull for the same team. <laughs> it means one of us, one of our teams lost, and we're mad. You know, we need God. He helps us get over it. He does. He helps us get over it. Uh, this morning, um, I want to talk about the two kingdoms. Uh, that's the title of this message, um, the two kingdoms. Um, but I don't want to do an exposition of the kingdoms themselves from the standpoint of, of uh, expository teaching and preaching. I have another reason for titling in that, and I had a kind of a battle <laughs> with it. But <clears throat> we all know that our God is omnipotent, right? Amen. All-powerful. Yes. And we also know that our God is a God of love. He is love. And that means he loves us, cares for us, right? We have a God who is all-powerful and loves us, right? Now, this we know. But when we look around at the world around us, we see some perplexing things. Because we see violence, misery, suffering, tragedy, tragic accidents, horrible pain and death. And since we know that our God is all-powerful and omnipotent and loving, it causes us to be confronted with some very, very difficult questions. Questions like, why is there evil and suffering in the world? Why do Christians suffer? We know we belong to God, so why are we suffering? Why didn't God just create a world where suffering and evil didn't exist? And since we know all these things do exist, why doesn't God do something? These are some very difficult questions. And uh, <laughs> we struggle with them. Not just us, but people in the world as well. The title of this message is The Two Kingdoms because when you grasp that concept and lay hold of it well enough, it gives you a 
biblical construct, a platform, if you will, that will support answers to those questions. And the reason you need that is because if you don't have a scriptural basis for answering these questions, then your answers are just a matter of opinion, something you kind of come up on your own. And opinions are like noses. You know, everybody's got one, <laughs> which means they aren't very valuable, except for breathing. For breathing, they're important. But we cannot answer these questions based on our opinions and what we think about them. And, and, and that doesn't have any real value there. If we're going to answer them properly, we have to have a scriptural basis for answering. A scriptural basis that supports the answers. Okay? And an understanding of the two kingdoms helps us prepare a biblical construct to support our answers. So this morning, that's what we're going to do. We're going to confront these difficult questions. But in order to do that, we have to first establish a scriptural basis for answering them. And then we can proceed to answer the questions. So that's how we're going to proceed. We're going to, first of all, establish a scriptural basis for answering the questions. And then we're going to answer the questions. Now, caveat. There's no way to answer any of these type questions definitively. We can't do it. It can't be done. And the reason being is because, like Paul said, we see through a glass darkly. We, there's just way too many things that we don't know or understand. And so many things that are just completely beyond us that there's no way to have a definitive, final answer for these types of questions. But that doesn't mean God hadn't let us hadn't left us without recourse. You see, if you have a pretty comprehensive understanding of the Bible and knowledge of God's redemptive purposes, you can construct a platform for handling these questions, for asking them and finding answers. Now, I don't know that um, many of us are plagued with any of this right now, but there will be times when every one of us has to kind of deal with some of these things. So we want to approach these answers because, like I said, we aren't going to be able to answer them definitively. That is not possible for us in this life. So, let's first of all establish a scriptural basis for answering these questions and then begin to answer them. So let us begin with Matthew chapter 12, verse 32. Matthew chapter 12, verse 32. Now, I uh, I left my iPad at home because it proved it did not know how to conduct itself in the pulpit. <laughs> yeah, it just it's just unruly. It just it won't cooperate. And uh, you know, and the funny part about that is when I'm at home, it does. But I get here and it just wants to show out. And I can't get anything to work. Matthew chapter 12, verse 22, 32. 
Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him either in this age or in the age to come. Now, I don't want to deal with this passage in terms of exegesis. In other words, the context here is not our concern. What I want to focus your attention on is the very last clause. Either in this age or in the age to come. And the reason I want to focus your attention there is because this passage makes it clear that there are two distinct ages in God's redemptive history. And the redemptive history of man. And they're usually called this age and the age to come. Just like in this passage. And we'll find that in many scriptures that support that. That means the entire sweep of man's history from the fall of man to the end of time can be divided into these two distinct ages. This age and the age to come. Okay? Now turn with me to Matthew chapter 24 verse 3. Matthew 24, verse 3. Jesus has just got through having a conflict with the Pharisees. And he goes out to the Mount of Olives. And he's just about to begin this Olivet Discourse. And it says, Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Now, what makes this passage important for us to understand is because it reveals the event that separates this age from the age to come. And that event is the second coming of Christ. The second coming of Christ marks the end of this age and the beginning of the age to come. And notice how they phrase this, and it makes it clear that they understood this much. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming, and of the end of the age? You see, they understood that his coming marked the end of this age, and the beginning of the age to come. Now, what we have to take note of is when you're talking about two different ages, those ages are basically kingdoms. Okay? So we're talking about two kingdoms, two ages that define two kingdoms. The kingdom of this age is characterized by pain, suffering, Tragedy, misery, all the things we look around us and see, and death. It's an age of darkness. But the age, but the kingdom of the age to come is characterized by righteousness, peace, joy, and life. It's a kingdom of light. So we're talking about a kingdom of darkness versus a kingdom of light. And the event that divides the two is the second coming of Christ. Now what we have to understand real clearly is this. In order to have a kingdom, you got to have a king. All right? And... I think all of us know that in the age to come, the king, the absolute monarch, the supreme ruler, is Jesus Christ. (laughs) Hallelujah. But that leaves us with a question. 
who is the king, the monarch, the ruler of this age? Turn with me to the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verse 21, 31. John 12, 31. Now, the first two scriptures we use, I'm not trying to exegete those at all. And I'm basically using them because they support an idea that the scriptures have proclaimed throughout. Okay? But on this one, we need to pay a little closer attention to the context here. Because in this scripture, the two consequences of Jesus' death on the cross are delineated. It says, now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. The first consequence is, now is the judgment of this world. What Jesus is saying is that in executing judgment on him, the world is judged. That in condemning him, the world condemns itself. Yeah. And then his next statement. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. What he's saying is Satan's hold over this world is about to be broken. That in the, his death on the cross... Satan's hold on this world will be broken. But now the point I want, the thing I want you to pay attention to here is how Jesus designates Satan. Because he says, now the ruler of this world. Now I think we know he's talking about Satan. But think about how he's, the designation. He is calling Satan the ruler of this world. It's mind-boggling. Because Jesus is basically saying that the person who is ruling over this world is Satan. Now, make no mistake about this. He is a ruler, but he is not the supreme ruler. Amen. Our God is the supreme ruler. But if he is the supreme ruler, and yet Jesus rightly says that Satan is the ruler of this world... The question we got to ask is, why would God allow this? Now, remember, our God is omnipotent. He's all-powerful, and he's loving. He loves us. So why would he allow Satan to rule over this world? Good question. Turn with me to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4. Luke 4, verses 5 through 8. This is during the temptation when Jesus was being tempted by the devil, devil for 40 days. Then the devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, all this authority I will give you and its glory. For this has been delivered to me. And I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. And Jesus answered and said to him, get behind me, Satan. For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. The point I want you to notice about that 
is that God, that Jesus does not dispute Satan's claim. When Satan says, all this authority and its glory have been given to me, Jesus doesn't dispute that. On the contrary, Jesus intimates by his response that that's true. That all this authority and its glory has been delivered into Satan's hands. Kind of blow you away, right? When Satan confesses that this authority was delivered to him, Jesus does not dispute it. And the reason he doesn't dispute it is because it's true. You see, in the Garden of Eden, when man refused to obey God and obeyed the suggestion of Satan, the dominion over the whole earth which God had given to him, he surrendered to Satan. He delivered into Satan's hands the authority that had been given to him. Yeah. So when Satan says, all this has been delivered to me, that's the truth. And Jesus doesn't dispute it. In fact, his answer tacitly shows that he knows this to be true. Now this blows you away because when we say that Satan is the ruler of this world and the dominion over the whole earth has been given to him by us. What we're saying is that our God, who is supreme, has all power and authority and loves us, is allowing this. Now, what you have to understand about God is that God is absolutely just, even to his enemies. And God, once God does not having once given something, take it back. The gifts and callings of God are without repentance, meaning he won't take it back. Now, man was legitimately given the authority of the earth. And then man legitimately handed that authority over to Satan, and God has allowed it. Now, if that doesn't blow your mind, let this blow your mind. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. But even if our gospel is veiled or hidden, it is hidden to those who are, pe who are perishing, whose minds are the God of this age has blinded who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. The thing I want you to pay attention to is how Paul extends Jesus' evaluation even further because he recognizes that Satan is not only the ruler of this world, he is the God of this age. Now, why would I God allow this? Because unlike us, God does not halfway do things. And God has used this situation 
to guarantee that sin will never again enter his universe when this program is over. Hallelujah. So now, we've got a, a biblical construct for answering our questions. So, let's go to part two. Let's start answering the questions. First question, why is there evil and suffering in the world? Well, you know, this is an amazing thing because... When you ask who's responsible for, responsible for the evil, for the suffering, for the misery, for the difficulty, for the death, for the sorrow, the answer is the God of this world. This is his domain. You see, when we talk about who's responsible for all of this, it's not our God. It's the God of this world. You see, Satan lawfully has dominion over the earth. And the only way we can truly see what that means is to see the truth of what the fall of man did. Because in refusing to obey God and obeying the suggestion of Satan, we basically kick God out of his own creation. We basically kicked him out of his own creation because now he is no longer the voice that man answers to. Satan is. Satan is the God of this world. The God of this age. The ruler of this world. That's why it's so messed up. That's why uh, everything is kind of out of whack and makes no sense. That's why innocent people suffer. <laughs> Our God would not have it to be this way if he were in charge. Why do you think we have to pray, thy kingdom come? Because his kingdom is not here. Why do you think we have to pray, thy will be done? Because his will is not being done here. The God of this world runs this show. Now, the result is that Satan wreaks havoc and our God takes the blame. He does all this evil and wickedness and our God gets blamed for it. Yeah. To make matters worse, because we keep thinking, well, seeing it was like that. Why didn't God try to do something? He did. <laughs> when he came here, he came for the express purpose of setting things right. And we killed him. He came for the purpose of setting things right. And we said, you're wrong. You don't know what you're talking about. And we murdered him. So when people say, well, why wouldn't God try to do something? He did. He did. This is not 
a great situation for man because all of us can see easily how messed up this creation has become. And not only did it get messed up from a moral standpoint, but because of sin and disobedience, the whole creation itself got cursed. So we have natural things that harm us now. Tornadoes and floods and natural disasters. Second question, why do Christians suffer? Well, remember I said that God was making sure that sin never again enters his universe when this program is over. Because what he has created is a program where every one of us starts off in the enemy's territory. We all start off on the enemy's ground. And we have to entreat him to come the other way. And we have to fight our way back to where we're supposed to be. And in the process of fighting our way back, we get to see all the ugliness and the evil that sin and disobedience has created in this earth. And we, once temptation and the tempter are removed and the sin nature is destroyed, we will never again come this way. That was God's doing. But what you have to understand is that the kingdom of God is not of this age. And if you are a member of that kingdom, that means you are not of this age. You're in it, but you're not of it. You now belong to another kingdom, the kingdom that is to come. You are members of that kingdom. And what God has done is he is using all these things. Romans 8, 28 tells us that he has the power to make it all work together for your good. That you become more and more like Christ, Romans 8, 29. And he also uses it to discipline us because some of the ugliness and the sinfulness of life, some it just clings too close to some of us. And we can't get rid of it. And so he gives us a little help with that. My dad used to do that for us when we uh, did something. We'd say, uh, he'd say, um, I need you to take care of that yard there today. Okay, dad. And he wouldn't bother you until it started getting close to sundown. And he said, you need me to help you with that yard? And we said, no, sir. Because <laughs> we didn't like the kind of help he gave. Man, God is a better parent than we are. He uses these things to shape and mold our character and to discipline us that Christ might be formed more and more in us. Why didn't God just create a world where evil and suffering didn't exist. He did. <laughs> yeah. When God saw all that he created initially, he said, this is very good. Yeah, he, he did create that kind of world. We messed it up. You see, suffering Pain, evil, and death are all consequences of man's disobedience. They're not what God wanted. So why doesn't God do something? 
He did. <laughs> God created another kingdom. And he gave an invitation to all, whosoever will, and invited us to have our sins forgiven and be translated out of this kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his son. You see, we are in this world, but we're not of it. But everything that is common to man, we're subject to. Yeah. You see, if God exempted us from it, who wouldn't be saved? We'd all be out there. I mean, if, if every time uh, you pray for healing, God healed you automatically, it would be an absolute fool who wouldn't join that. But you see, all we get is a taste of the powers to come. You see, we don't get the whole thing because it's not here yet. And we're not there yet. But the day is coming when all of that will be on full display. And we'll all see clearly what our God has done for us. God's purpose is to remove sin forever from this creation. But in the meantime, we are in a fallen world. And the God of this world wants to make sure that everything he has done that is evil, wrong, bad, that our God gets blamed for it. But the day is coming. Hallelujah. The day is coming. When we will hear that loud voice from heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. And we shall reign with him. Shall we pray? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Pray with me. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for opening your word to us. For strengthening us. For helping us. For guiding us. For waiting on us. We appreciate your patience. That has been on full display in the way you've dealt with us. Grant that all of us might come to understand clearly that you have provided all that we need and that as your children our hope is in your son and in the kingdom that has been prepared for us from the foundation of the world in Jesus name we pray Amen
praise with angels and saints we sing worthy are you That's the gospel, that's the reality of where we are, where we're going, and where we are as believers right now, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation that's ruled by another master that hates them. And so I think there's a great reality, not only for a call to salvation, but also awareness of what our job is as witnesses. Is there anybody in the house here who says, I need Jesus I'm tired of being dominated by this other master, Satan. If we don't know Jesus, as was shared, we're in his house. And he's a master that dominates over you. Right? Every believer in, in this room remembers what it was like to be dominated. What it was like to be abused and pushed down by the kingdom of Satan. If you're in this house and you say, I need Jesus, I need a good master, I need a good Lord. If you'll raise your hand, Jesus will see you, will see your heart, and he will change you and make you his own. Is there anybody in this house who says, I need Jesus. I want to come to Jesus today and receive him as my Lord and master. I see a hand back here. Amen. I see a hand back here. Is there anybody else? So another hand over here. Okay, amen. 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 Is there anybody else who says, I want to come to Jesus today? Let's let's pray. Those who raise their hand, if you can repeat after me from where you are. And then everybody else, let's just be a good supporting cast in this moment to what Jesus is doing. Pray with me. Father, I thank you so much for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for sending a solution to my problem. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for dying on that cross for me. Thank you, Jesus, for wanting to save me from this world and myself. Thank you, Lord, for saving me from that enemy, the devil. I ask that you would hear me as I pray and I ask Jesus to come into my heart and make me new. Make me brand new, Jesus. Cause me to be yours forever. Thank you for your blood, Jesus. The remission of sins and forgiveness forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. 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 The scripture shows us that there's a great party going on in heaven for those who receive salvation because they know, they know what's just taken place. As you become a child of God and you're no longer in that sphere that you were in before. That's amazing. Sin doesn't have dominion in this sphere to those who just received the Lord. Sin does not have dominion over you anymore. Just cling to Jesus. He's clinging to you. He brought you here today. He will remain with you. He will do the work. Just continue yielding to him and saying yes. Amen. If there's anybody online who hasn't already written our moderator, you can write her and she'll speak with you about coming to Jesus as well. I'm sure you prayed with us though, but you can write us and you can say, I receive the Lord today as well. Amen. 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 Well, um, for our first time guests, if you did not receive a gift, please remember you can just speak with one of the ushers back here. You'll see the name tag uh, for Sister Anna, Brother Rini's usually back there, Brother Doug, uh, Miss Laura, I believe, and Miss Elsa are back there. You can just get with one of them. They have a pin tag saying that they're ushers, and we'll get you a gift, okay? All right, everybody. Well, it is now time to leave. Pastor and the team will be back on Friday, so we'll see them on Sunday, and we look forward to seeing you at our midweek service this Wednesday. Let's bless each other with these words. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus, I bless you. 
Go with God, everybody.